listening to Sarah Talk. It's political. You could run a fucking pet rock against right. Donald Trump, and I would vote for the pet rock. Oh, yeah. That's where we're at right uh, yeah. now. Yeah. Critical. Uh, hang on. Let me <laughs> I'm gonna change some words here. All right. Ready? <clears throat> Adults with religious confusion who truly believe in a higher power that created us and actually cares what we do with our penises and vaginas should be treated with care, compassion, and kindness, but must not be officially affirmed in their confusion, no matter how sincerely held. Fuck you. And positively LGBT positive. In many states, you can still be evicted from housing simply for being gay or transgender. Stand and fight with us. Oh, and occasionally, completely absurd. I don't know if you've ever seen a lightning bug, but he flies around with a flame, a light coming out of his behind. The lightning bug got a flame coming out of his butt. Oh, it's a beautiful night tonight. All the sodomites are out. (laughs) And now, from Orlando, Florida, your host, Sarah Austin. There's not enough rum in this bottle for me tonight. (laughs) Yeah, about that. Hi, how's your toe feeling? Uh, It's much better now. I slammed (laughs) my toe into the fucking baby gate. Uh, But it's better now, thanks. Ooh, Dan's husband is picking up pizza. Oh, there you go. So he's getting a treat tonight. He usually comes. A multiple hour episode. You're right, Dan. (laughs) (laughs) You are very, very right. Uh, okay, so there's nothing I love more than, like, last-minute, oh, shit, technical things. Yeah. And so, for those of you who listened to the first two, <laughs> first ten <laughs> minutes of the broadcast where I still had a hot mic. Um, oh, my gosh. Trying to figure out how to use Skype mm. and be able to fire off the sound cues that I need to play and <sighs> do all of those things all at the same time. I, uh, I should have come in here two hours ago, basically. Well, you know, sometimes you just have to play with your kid. That's true. It's true. We were having family time, so don't feel bad about it. We got it together now. Um, do you want to talk real quickly about your hair? Yeah. Before we bring our guest on real quick? Yeah. So I'm going to put a poll up, but here it is. Hey, oh, I need the bell. Uh, <laughs> a poll. <laughs> Not that kind of poll. I'm going to put a poll in the uh, listener group for everybody, but hear it here first now. Um. I'm thinking about shaving my head. And Sarah said, oh, we should do it live on Facebook. I thought... We should do it live right here on the show. Might be a really great idea. And um, I I mentioned it kind of in passing to Russell today. We went to a a family event this morning and my mom was with us. (laughs) I was talking to Russell about it. My mom got all, oh, don't do that. That's not attractive. (laughs) And um, so now I want to do it even more. basically is with that right so anyway i want i want to know who would who would tune in to see becca shave her head live on facebook there you go we'll put a poll up uh <laughs> later on all right so um let's just get right into it yeah we, let's have, go. we have a lot to talk about Whoa. tonight um provided i hooked it all up correctly hopefully our guest today is fellow podcaster and radio host public speaker activist trans woman and atheist it's no wonder we hit it off so well Maddie Love, welcome to Sarah Talk. Thanks. Oh, and yeah, it works. Really all that? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think I'd make it back here. I was trying to rush to the bathroom to get my clippers so I could like <laughs> flick them on right as you like turn my oh, mic on. That would have been great. Uh, I could have just put but, a sound cue you know, ready. Yeah. Hey, that's all right. Been awesome. Uh, so you hey, you wh- your clips. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> welcome uh, to the show. Thanks for joining us. Um, why don't we start off with? Just uh, some of your life journey, and then maybe we can move on to some other things. Um, we do have a news story competition for everyone this week, so that'll be fun. Um, and we'll talk about your podcasts and Minnesota atheists and all of that sort of thing. But like first, um, and and I've been listening to your show, but I don't know that I've heard yet the Maddie Love story, except in fragments here or there. So I know in your story that gender and atheism are very interconnected so uh, should we start with where does that start is it start with growing up in a religious house Hmm, no actually i grew up uh we called it enc some people call it like you know weddings and funerals kind of christian home oh like that's the only time we went to the only time we went to church was eastern christmas wow so it wasn't a 
it wasn't like a really religious house. Okay. I became a fundamentalist oh. uh, probably when I was like 17 or 18. Let's see. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I, you know, because I knew everything. And <laughs> I, got, I got a really hard sell and I bought into it a hook, line and sinker. And, you know, didn't end. So <laughs> it wasn't the best decision I ever made in life. But no, like gen- the gender stuff, that started back when I was, you know, like, I mean, I have a typical trans story. Not typical because everybody's different, but like mine was the stereotypical one. Like, you know, I knew I was like four or three, oh. whatever. Like my earliest memories are trans related. Wow. So like, but the going forward, like, you know, I became an evangelical Christian. I, you know, all the gays are going to hell. Oh. And then. I identified, you know, I had a lot of self-hatred. I identified all these things I was feeling as sin. And in my faith, when you prayed to Jesus, it was supposed to, you're supposed to become a new creation. Well, that meant all those sins should have gone away, I thought. And I didn't actually change. And so then I started to question, do I really love Jesus? And then question more. And it just led, you know, a big snowball effect huh. to where I ended up leaving the faith over it. And now I'm not a Christian for many, many other reasons. Right. But... So, so yeah, um, for me, gender and faith were really tied together. Yeah, um, and and I'm thinking like, for your gender story, how how did your family react to all of this? See, I didn't I didn't have the uh, blessing slash curse of knowing at such a young age. Like, I didn't start dealing with that until puberty, um, and you know, I know how my hand my parents handled that. But so, like, how did your family handle as you were going through that? Well, like, I mean, to be fair, I didn't know what it was until the internet, until I could right. reach out and, like, learn yeah. what it, what this word was. I thought I was alone. Um, you know, it's horrible. But then, you know, when it came out to my family, I was coming out to a wife of 18 years, mm-hmm. and a, we have five kids, and at the time, we have 12 grandkids now. At the time, I think we only had, like, four. Wow. Um, our youngest of five was 15, and he was going through a rough spot, too, because he had actually just came out as trans <laughs> so um interesting you know my my wife was digesting the fact that she no longer had a baby girl mm-hmm. and that she was no longer married to a man wow. so I mean, reality was you know she was never married to a man but you know in her eyes you know that it was a big change for her but we're still together. She changed her religion over it. That's how strongly she, she felt. She no longer believes in hell. That's how she like, oh, wow. she still has, that's how she got around it. She's like, you know, I just don't believe in hell anymore. So now I don't have to worry about you guys going to hell. You'll still be with me in heaven. That's like, that's fine. Like, I mean, it doesn't like you can love Jesus still. I don't, but like no disrespect either way. And I don't know. It works out pretty well, but it was really tough for her. We, we almost got divorced. Um, because I gave her that as an option. It's like, honey, you know, I understand. Like, I'm not going to fight you. I, I get it. This is not what you were expecting. It's not fair to you, but I have to do this. Like, <laughs> it's kind of selfish in a way because I am doing this for me, but it's not selfish, like in a bad way. It's not, I don't know what the right word for that is when you're doing something that's completely for you. Right. But you have to do it. And it's not a negative thing that you're doing. So, hmm. but yeah. Because all my all my kids have been super supportive. Um, all my grandkids have been supportive. Oh, my great. granddaughter, fifteen, just moved in with us, and you know we're we're getting her enrolled in school, and she's like, "These are my two grandmas." So, yeah. I love kids. It's Aren't kids pretty... just great? <laughs> yeah, talk about giving you hope for a future, <laughs> like that old I don't know that Whitney Houston song. <laughs> 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 no, it's so true though. Like. Because our son is seven now, and he will correct people, mm-hmm. and like he's the champion. Yeah, he is. Yeah. No fear when it comes to that. So I've heard you, I think, self-identify as a trans person who rarely, if ever, gets identified in public as cisgender, and I would place myself squarely in that same category. Um, and I say all the time that like. The misgenderings don't bother me because like I deal with people in my job who are contractors and they come in for maybe two or three nights, maybe a week. Uh, I assign them out a key. They do their work. They give me the key back and then they leave. But when they call me on the phone, hey, I'm here to check in. It's always sir. And 
I, mm-hmm. I get, you know, I get that a lot because my voice is deep. It's going to be, that's how it is. I'm, I'm not going to work to change it. Um, so like, I realize that's just a thing that I'm going to have to deal with. And I, and I lie and say that it doesn't bother me. Um, so for you, how do you navigate through those things when you're in, you know, the public space or dealing with people? Uh, it really depends on the situation, to be honest. Like if I'm at work where I've, you know, been out now for like three years at work and people that I've worked with for 20 years, I, I kind of, I don't want to say I give them a pass, but it doesn't bother me as much. Mm-hmm. But the people I've just met, who it's like, you've never known me as anything besides me. Mm. Like, you don't get a pass at all. Um, those ones hurt more. And I've actually, I, I go by Maddie all the time. But my legal name is actually Madeline. And I've found that when I answer the phone now, I say, this is Madeline. Mm. Because if I say, this is Maddie, they assume it's M-A-T-T-Y. Mm-hmm. Like, right. I don't know, some Irish take on Matthew. <laughs> and it's like, no, no. That's, that's not it. <laughs> so, um, but like, I mean, and I say, you know, I say, I, I rarely get pegged at, well, that's a different topic. Um, I say, <laughs> I rarely get identified <laughs> yeah. as, uh, as this, but you know, like I, I'm a, I go to the gym now. I just, I just started. I'm not like trying to be like some health nut or something. Like, but I just start going to the gym and like, I go in the locker room and I get changed and like, I mean, I'm not taking pants off and stuff. I've never got harassed or side eye or anything by anybody in there. I also don't talk. Right. <laughs> which, yeah. Which helps. So it's easier for me to navigate, even if I know that somebody knows that I'm trans, if they're not making a big deal out of it. And then it's like, whatever. I can keep, you know, I don't have to have it thrown on my face. And as long as it's not thrown on my face, I'm fine. And other days I want to curl up in bed and, just watch Queen music videos. Yes. And yes. <laughs> just like, oh, I'll just listen to Freddie Mercury. <laughs> I've noticed for me that like it's it's the surring that bothers me more than anything. Like, and I know all right, we all have different levels of trauma related to our experiences and we we all get um get worked up by different things and dare you say the word trigger. Um but you know, there are different different things that are triggering and so for some people, um you know, just somebody who refers to people in the masculine in general, like, hey, you guys, which means, hey, everyone in this room, mm-hmm. you know, I understand that for, for a lot of people, that's that's a big deal. Fortunately, from my pr- place of privilege, like I personally don't like that doesn't bother me personally, but I totes get where like, yep, that's fuck the patriarchy. Like, absolutely. I can understand where that comes from. Yeah, and I have I do have the fortune of being with somebody it's gonna sound terrible, but who's gaslit me for so long <laughs> 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 unintentionally, like she's not meaning to, but it's had a I've taken I've gotten a positive effect out of it and that I've gotten I don't want to say a thicker skin. I've just it's certain things don't trigger me as much as they did when I was first coming out, I guess. Um I don't know that that's a positive or a negative thing. I think it's something I'll still be working through some therapy on. But yeah, like if somebody walks in and says, hey, you guys, it doesn't bug me. In fact, I find myself saying that a lot. I'm trying to like wean it out of my vocabulary because there's other words I would rather use, but it doesn't bother me when somebody does it. Right. What and- really gets me is like when I'm on a phone call and then they say, they say, sir, and I correct them. And like two minutes later, they're like, thank you, sir. And it's like, what did I just say? Right. What did I just say? I'm paying you money, your customer service. Come on, <laughs> get with it. Yeah, I don't know. Like for for mo- and most of the time, this is me dealing with like third shift sleep brain and and just not having the energy to fight. <laughs> but most of my calls are like they're they're very quick. They're not like you know. Again, somebody will call and say, "Hey, uh, I'm checking in for the thing," and because I'll answer the phone, you know, X Y Z. This is Sarah, and oh hey, this is so and so from Joe's Plumbing. Uh, I'm here to work on the elevator, or whatever thing, the drain drain into the elevator. Uh, okay. I'm I'm in the office. Can you swing on by to to pick up the key? And they'll go. All right. Thank you, sir. We'll be there in a minute. Really? Are you kidding me? But that's it. Like that. And then it's done. Then we've hung up. And then, 
I may, I may see them one or two more times, and but like I, I don't know. For me, it's like, almost like by the way, yeah, right? But it's I don't know whether it's just not worth it to me to like right. put myself through it, or or I don't know. There's I'm sure my therapist will have things to say about why I handle it the way I do. Well, and I'm in the same boat. Like I, I work in a lab, and nurses will call and say, "Hey, we need you to come down. You know, draw some blood on you know bed, whatever." And they're and sometimes it you know whatever reason they're like, "Okay, hey, thanks, sir," and it's like. What the fuck? Can I swear on your show? Absolutely. I don't know. Oh, but... yeah, we encourage it. <laughs> but it's like, you know, what the fuck? Like, I, we work together. You know me. What? Where did this come from? Right. Like, although the other thing I got out of your story was you've got some fancy elevators where you work. We, we do. Them? So we have um, we have uh, a parking garage that has elevators and we have a, some pedestrian bridges that go like across the what is it? seven eight lanes now yeah and uh major big road (laughs) and the pedestrian bridges each have an elevator in them and so because they're out you know sort of in the elements there has to be a and it's florida so everything's built on sand and it rains for six hours a day in the summer so we have to have like you know a runoff uh water pit that catches all the rainwater and if it backs up into the into the elevator shaft pit then we have to you know have to get the plumber out and that is all that. not they, what I was picturing. They are pretty fancy, though. They <laughs> it's definitely, you know. It's, Russell calls I bullshit was on like that. a Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Russell would know. <laughs> <laughs> you you thought the, the elevators were gold leafed? <laughs> no, not yet. Well, like I'm thinking like a Donald Trump like gold plated sink <laughs> in each elevator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're not that fancy. <laughs> no, it's not Trump towers. <laughs> This elevator's going down. <sighs> like uh, Hollywood Tower of Terror. Mm. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you probably go down just as much often. <laughs> and not the good kind that you yeah. want it to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jesus. I'm sorry. Um, I'm, I'm not even drinking rum tonight. <laughs> right? Maybe you should be. <laughs> so, so, um... Is there anything else that we haven't hit on, like, in the way that those two identities, trans and atheist, are interconnect for you? You know, I don't think so. I mean, there were other things that helped me go to atheism and things like that. And there were other social issues that helped push me to realize that I was trans. But for the most part, I mean, as far as the religion and gender go, you know, it was just I've known I knew since I was a kid. Mm-hmm. And it just like, you know, Jesus, you're not, you, you told me that you would change me. You didn't change me. You failed. I'm going to go find something new. Right. Lots of, uh, lots of childish chatter in the chat tonight. Uh, <laughs> Dan, you're out of control. Jake, I love you. <laughs> well, you can't just comment without reading. Come on. Jake says, hashtag make elevators great again. Dan says, mega. <laughs> <laughs> who thought that it would turn into an elevator conversation right. oh my um okay so the elevator is gonna be huge huge <laughs> i said mega i meant Meg- mega mega yeah <laughs> instead of m-a-g-a it's, it's m-e-g-a, M-E-G-A. M-E-G-A. Okay. yeah oh. all right so we'll come back to some more of your story in a bit um and talk about Minnesota atheists and the we'll geek out over talk radio things. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll talk about your podcast and all the other stuff that you do. But uh, first, let's cover some news. Un- kind of news. Unfold the newspaper and get right into it. Now, I didn't pull a whole lot of stories out for the, the week because I knew we were going to have a guest on. We we're going to mm-hmm. have lots of stuff to talk about. So I didn't, you know, you I, go crazy. I tried not to overdo it. Um, so the first story, Pastor Steven Anderson. Remember this guy? Steven Anderson. He does sound familiar, but I don't, again. So, what do you got? For those of you who may not remember the Good Shepherd, I took the liberty of put together a little clip reel here to remind us he's made a name for himself of spewing garbage like this. What do you think they mean when they say women's rights? You know what they mean? The right to divorce your husband is what they mean. 
You know what they mean? The right to rebel and disobey your husband, the right to divorce him, the right to go out and get a job and make your own money, the right to tell him what to do, the right to go vote for our leaders as if women should have any say in how our country is run. Whoa. When the Bible says that I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. <laughs> <laughs> Becca's gonna like hurt somebody. That's not listen, that's twenty eight seconds in, you got three I'm, minutes left. I'm like looking frantically for something I can throw that won't break. <laughs> Your face is so red oh too. My God. <gasps> oh I am quoting the Bible right now. But it's old fashioned. Why do you think that women were not allowed to vote until the 20th century? And yet if I get up and say, I don't believe women should vote because if we're in a democracy, which is ruled by the people, I don't want to be ruled over by women or this, you know, this week, this this filthy sodomite picture is everywhere and people are showing this transvestite or transgender or whatever this guy is. You know what I'm talking about? This, this athlete or whoever he is, I don't know who it is. I'd never even heard of him before this week. Bruce Jenner. How do you not have heard of Bruce Jenner ever oh, before? Oh, my God. <laughs> I, oh, my, oh, God. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Strap in. There's a couple La minutes left. <laughs> <clears throat> Has basically mutilated his body, apparently. And, and, and you know what? He's being praised by our president. Our President Obama is praising him for, or, or praising her. We don't even know what it is. And you know what? And people, are, and then, and then people are like, "Oh, we need to pray for him that he finds Jesus." I'm going to pray that he dies and goes to hell. Are you serious? Look, I have nothing but hate when I see a man dressed up as a woman who has mutilated his body to become a woman and saying, "Hey, look at me, everybody! Look at me, kids!" I mean, the kids in America today, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old, are seeing this freak and having their minds perverted and ruined permanently. I hope, I, listen to me, I hate him with a perfect hatred. Amen. I have no love, no love for this Bruce freak. Yeah. Amen. And you wonder why we, like, have problems with religion. I'm, I, I'm shaking. I swear I'm, to God, it's almost over. Oh, my God. I hope he dies today. I hope he dies and goes to hell. He's Amen. disgusting. He's filthy. He's reprobate. Amen. You evil, filthy animal that's destroying the morals of our country. Right. Die! Amen. And this. <laughs> and I, you know, if they walk in, I'm not going to say, oh, I don't want to hurt their feelings. What does the Bible say, my friend? But you've been deceived tonight. You've been lied to. And you don't even know what the Bible says anymore. Amen. Because you're watching TV and you've been brainwashed. The media has been brainwashing you week after week and month after month and day after day to get you to think it's all about gay marriage, gay marriage, gay marriage, gay marriage. Don't let them, don't let them bake the cake. Don't bake the cake. Don't bake the cake. Yeah, if they come, I can serve them. Yup, I don't want to hurt their feelings. Yup, I love them. Yup, don't bake the cake. Yup, but just, but just, just not the marriage. Just don't let them get married. No, care if they get married. That's not what the Bible says. Right. The Bible does not say, don't hurt their feelings. The Bible calls them beasts. Yeah, Amen. that's right. Amen. Why are we afraid of these people, huh? Amen. Greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. Why do we cower in fear and we're so scared of them? Like, oh no, I better be careful. This is a really hard decision. No, it's not a hard decision, Melissa. Why don't you get out of that stupid liberal church you're in and get in a leather-long, Bible-believing, King James Baptist church, and it wouldn't be a hard decision. Amen. Look, do you, who thinks it's a hard decision if some faggot wants you to make him a wedding cake? No. No. Anybody struggling with that right now? That guy, Stephen Anderson. Is it over? It's over. It's over. <laughs> oh, thank God. <sighs> but listen. I got people in the chat saying, give me a hand gesture. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> But but listen, okay. Uh, oh. I did all of that because I didn't take a Xanax before if, this. <laughs> hey 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 hey! Don't drink all my rum. <laughs> if, that if was real. Actual rum this week. Okay. Oh yeah. So, that's but good. listen listen, I, 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 we don't believe in supernaturally things. But if there is a God, if there's karma, this is it. Steven Anderson. Is the, the worst thing about that guy? Yes. The worst thing about that guy is he made me defend Caitlyn Jenner. 
Yeah. Yeah. Right? Like, as toxic as she is, like, she. (laughs) Sir. (laughs) She. Thank you. Not not <laughs> fucking it. Or a freak or right. all those other things. Oh, oh, my God. Okay, Stephen Anderson is the pastor of the Faithful Word Baptist Church in Arizona, which was labeled an anti-gay hate group by the Southern Poverty Law Center. Okay, so everybody close your eyes and picture this. Imagine you're Stephen Anderson, right? That hateful fucking bigot we just heard. I would kill myself. You don't hate the gay. Yeah, you do. <laughs> you do hate the gays, and you want to see them all die. You're on your way to Jamaica to indoctrinate the savage, pot-smoking, godless dark people, when, upon landing in Georgia for your layover, you're notified by the airline that Jamaica called and said, (gasps) no thanks. It was that guy. See, I knew I knew the name, but I had never heard any of this shit. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, good for Jamaica. Thank you. Anderson has been previously denied entry to South Africa, Canada, the United Kingdom, and Botswana. Now Jamaica makes number five. Spokesperson for the Ministry of mm. National Security said the decision was made by the chief immigration officer because the pastor's statements are not conducive to the current climate. Now, it's important to point out that Jamaica doesn't have a great track record when it comes to the LGBTQ community and rights, but they have been making slow progress and activists are hopeful that this move signals a brighter future. Anderson, for his part, goes tin foil hat. Uh, of course. He Everybody, does. Pastor Steven Anderson here from Faithful Word Baptist Church in Tempe, Arizona. And I just found out that I've been banned from Jamaica. I had a layover here in Atlanta, Georgia. And as soon as the plane landed in Atlanta, the stewardess made an announcement that I needed to go see the gate agent. As soon as I arrived, they, they paged, you know, Steven Anderson and row 44. So I went over to the gate agent and they told me that Jamaica had notified the airline that I was not going to be allowed to enter the country. So to not even allow me on the plane to Kingston because they weren't going to be letting me into the country of Jamaica. (laughs) I'm pretty surprised because I've seen a lot of stuff online that said that Jamaica is, quote, the most homophobic country in the world. And he's, I mean, he's right there to a point. Again, they don't have the best Mm -hmm. record. So, no, he thought he was going into his, this is his His turf. His people, right. Yeah. yeah. Uh Uh-uh. So it's pretty weird that I would be banned from Jamaica because of my views on homosexuality. But to me, it just goes to show that we're heading into a one-world government uh, here we go. where individual nations, <laughs> they, don't, they don't really have any say over, over what they want to do. You know, a country like Jamaica that's supposed to be a sovereign nation, uh, apparently they can't really do their own thing. Because obviously this is an outside influence from the United States or the United Kingdom or whoever is pressuring them or influencing them to be pro-homosexual. Because- right, because other countries can't like make their own decisions without, without us influencing them. The people of Jamaica are not pro-homosexual at all. But apparently that agenda is just going to be crammed down their throat, whether they like it or not. <laughs> crammed down their throat. And if a preacher comes that just wants to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, I wasn't even planning on preaching anything about homosexuality. I was just going to tell people about Jesus, get people saved. This time, this time you weren't going to talk about Mm -hmm. homosexuality. But eventually you would. You get them reeled in with the Jesus that loves you. Right. But they're just scared to death that I'm going to go there and preach the gospel and get people saved and people are going to read their Bibles and and listen to my preaching and um, that they're actually going to have a a view that's against homosexuality. Uh, They just have an agenda to cram that view down everybody's throat. That's the only acceptable view to them. That sounds exactly like the Christian position, Mm, doesn't it? Yeah, like just on the other side of the fence. Right, you have an agenda too, and that's to stop the homosexuals. I don't like this guy. It's almost done. (laughs) Biblical view is not acceptable. You know, what the Bible clearly teaches in Romans 1, in the book of Jude, in 2 Peter chapter 2, Leviticus 20, 13. You know, that's not acceptable to them. So anyway, I'm going to be continuing on to a different Caribbean country. I've already booked a different flight. So I'm going to spend the night here in Atlanta, and then I'm going to continue on to a different uh, Caribbean country in the morning and just continue the mission, do soul winning there. 
And we already have a great group that's already in Jamaica. That's They're tearing it up over there. I mean, they've been getting a lot of people saved, preaching the gospel to a lot of people. So pray for their continued safety and success. But they've already accomplished a lot. The trip's going really well. Um, so stay tuned for more reports and updates about how things are going down in Jamaica. God bless you. Have a great day. God bless you too, asshole. God bless you right in the ass. <laughs> Repeatedly. What? <laughs> um, With a cactus. Uh, okay. Go ahead. That sh- that swig of rum just hit. <laughs> Feel good now. Okay. That's all. Oh, I thought you had more than that. I, I just was not prepared for that right out of the gate. Like, you got to warn me when I'm going to get that angry. <laughs> Sorry. My head is, like, still burning, but, oh. I try. Remember, I try to start low, and then we climb our way up out of the darkness. Yeah. Okay. So, in light of that, didn't expect you to go that low. <laughs> uh, in light of that, we're going to move on to one of our favorite segments. And um, Maddie, I'm so excited that you're here to play along with us because we're going to do something new this mm. week. Um, and I don't know, oh, like, goody. I don't know how long we'll be able to Pull make this off. go or how how it'll work, but we're going to give it a try. So. Uh, the best stories always start with a Florida man. Florida man. You're right <laughs> yeah. this time. You're actually, yeah, I could have put him in a different order, but you're absolutely right. A Florida man. And so what I want to do is I want to create like a bracket style competition, um, where each week we kind of put two stories against each other. And let the listeners vote, and like we'll all vote to get it started, and then I'll post it on our social media, and everybody can vote uh, which story they want to advance forward. And so, and, and again, this may evolve as as we go because I don't know what I'm doing, but uh, <laughs> at least I'm honest. Um, but so, like one side of the uh, one side of the the board would be like Florida against Florida stories, and then the other side can be like other states or countries, whatever competing against each other and then at the very end we'll have like a florida man versus a something else right okay sound good okay uh <laughs> let's see so like you have the winner and then the next following week you'll have the challenger or i, I don't know or not necessarily no, I, we may do it like an actual like a like a sports elimination do you know how to do sports things no <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say so it's like the final four sweet 16 yeah yeah exactly um okay so thank you dan for the reminder but my name is becca not mecca mecca (laughs) (laughs) wow right as i said it he Uh, popped it yeah he did (laughs) Um, that's funny okay so the first story and and keep in mind so we'll have a florida man story and a florida man story and we'll vote between those two Okay. okay A Florida man last Saturday tried to steal two airplanes from Peter O. Knight Airport in Tampa, then crashed a fuel truck into a hangar. 28-year-old Drew Bronnenberg, who was a lifeguard, not a pilot, (laughs) entered hangar 4407 around 10.30 p.m., hopped in a Piper PA-12 worth around $60,000, and after failing to start it, fired off a fire extinguisher. (laughs) (laughs) Did he think that the... (laughs) <laughs> then, then then he, there's he, more yeah, of course there's always more then he went over to <clears throat> hangar fi- uh, 5400 where he tried to steal an icon a5 worth two hundred eighty-five thousand dollars. still unable to figure out how to operate an aircraft he hopped in a golf cart <laughs> valued at sixty five hundred dollars <laughs> drove down to the airport's fuel pumps Switched over to an international 4200 truck, drove back to hangar 5400, and crashed it into the building, causing around $250 damage to the structure. Holy <laughs> fuck! <laughs> oh. oh, man. Oh, God. Uh, where was this? What? It was in Florida, but I mean, where? Yeah, in Florida. Tampa. Tampa. Tampa, okay. Yeah, it's a tam- and the, the, so the, the Peter O. Knight Airport is this little puddle jumper landing strip yeah. out in the 
You need to ask uh, Davina and Nikki if they know yeah. <laughs> they know this guy or this airport. <laughs> I'm sure they know the airport. I'm sure they know the airport, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> this guy was arrested shortly after on 11 charges, including <sighs> burglary, grand theft, and criminal mischief. He was released from Hillsborough County Jail after posting $26,000 oh, bond. Gosh. $26,000? Wait, that's like not even... mom gave him a haircut. That's... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Russell says, in a strong start for Florida. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just you wait, Russell. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know how you're going to top oh, that, but... And he was... <laughs> hmm? He was only wearing a pair of blue shorts. <laughs> 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 I'm surprised he'd be even wearing oh, that. He must have been a Gators fan. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. The second story for this bracket, uh, a Florida man was arrested after residents of an Orlando apartment complex caught him on video working out in the community gym naked. When deputies arrived, a leasing consultant informed them that she witnessed a tenant working out naked in the community gym and identified the man as Carrie Haynes. Police also spoke with a maintenance worker who went to the gym after the leasing consultant informed him of the situation, and he found Haynes riding a stationary bike naked. Because <laughs> that's comfortable. <laughs> the arrest report says that the maintenance worker asked him what he was doing, to which he replied, working out. <laughs> The worker then told Haynes the police had been called, and Haynes left to go back to his apartment, but the worker had captured the interaction on video for evidence. Okay? So I looked this place up. Andover Place Apartments. It's like out by Millennia. Uh-huh. Um, and I don't want to make any assumptions here, but it's also like right across the street from Bethel French Seventh-day Adventist Church. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Is that the, the look, no? There's more. Oh, okay, I'm like, <laughs> like this is this is weak, but go on. Okay. <laughs> so the apartment complex has a two star rating on Google. Oh, <laughs> there's a lot of comment, like general apartmenty complaints, right? right yeah. Sure. Maintenance doesn't come and fix stuff, and sure. the management's rude, and they don't answer the phone and stuff like that, right? Yeah. But <laughs> there's one that just kind of ticked all the boxes, except naked guy. <laughs> Jessica writes, "Where do I even begin?" It's supposed to be a safe and gated community, but it's far from it. People were constantly breaking into the fence. The fence gate by the office didn't even have a lock or latch. The weekend that I moved in, someone broke into my car and stole my parents' luggage. <laughs> One of the toilets in our apartment was clogged by a previous tenant and didn't get replaced or fixed until a little over a month after we moved in. When putting in maintenance requests, the maintenance team didn't get around to it for two to three weeks, there were constantly roaches, spiders, and ants in our apartment, despite paying a monthly fee for pest control. We also had a rodent in our apartment as soon as we moved in that would get into our garbage. The people who lived next door to us left their water on when they moved out, causing our laundry room and one of our bathrooms to flood. I really don't miss apartment living. No, not at all. Uh, when we went to, on vacation for a week, we came back to find our apartment broken into. Expensive items were taken, our place was a mess, and our cars were stolen. The complex is supposed to have security cameras, but apparently nobody saw or heard anything when it happened. The security company at the complex said that they couldn't do anything and we had to call the police. All of this happened within four months of moving in. Well, So that's the kind of area, neighborhood, place we're talking about. Okay. A long time ago, like, I mean, I'm talking, how old am I? I'm talking like 20 years ago. One of my very first jobs mm -hmm. was a leasing consultant <laughs> for an apartment complex. Did you ever have a naked guy we, working out we, in the gym? We did not have a naked guy in the gym, but we did have a guy who liked to go get his mail naked. Oh. He was like three doors from the mailbox. You know, they do have communities here in Florida for that. Yeah, this was not one of no, those. No, but I mean like, <laughs> right, this, did, you, did anybody tell him? Oh. <clears throat> oh yes, he was he was notified several times that that was inappropriate and <laughs> I don't know whatever happened. Oh. I wasn't there long enough to find it. But I'm thinking maybe this girl that had all these problems, the reason that she was having all these problems was because they were too busy trying to catch the naked guy in the gym maybe. to deal with all of that hot mess. Right. 
<laughs> and and apparently, like uh, you know, like all of these places in the past uh, year or whatever, the man a new management company came oh, in yeah. and promised all these things and never happened. All right, sure. But wait, there's more. Of course, there is. We aren't done with our Florida man yet. Oh my god! So as the deputies were leaving the gym, a landscaping employee flagged them down to let them know that the same naked guy was laying on the grass, masturbating by the community pond. <laughs> He also said, <laughs> still not done. <coughs> he, he also said he had seen Hayes urinate in the community pool. Sure enough, deputies found Hayes near the pond masturbating and escorted him back to his apartment where they found his clothes lying on the floor. The leasing consultant <laughs> added that Hayes had been exhibiting naked uh, acts like this around the complex for two weeks. He'd been doing stuff like this. Oh, my God. God. He was arrested on charges of exposure of sexual organs, disorderly conduct, and indecent exposure. Uh, wait. Yeah, I know the two. Like uh, the uh, yeah, well, yeah. right. They're not the same. There's there's two different yeah, charges can... <laughs> they can stack on to make it worse. Oh my gosh. Florida bringing it hard this that, week. The, I, the naked guy's funny, but I don't know the airport guy. He, he uh. <laughs> He gets my vote. <laughs> okay, Maddie. Uh, well, I think the naked guy, that one's got extra sinister stuff. Mm. It goes exposure of sexual organ in, organs is one of those laws they're trying to use against trans people. Yeah. Uh, getting changed in bathrooms. So I got to say, that's the worst story. That's a good, yeah, that's good. Okay. All right, you picked airport I guy? I picked the airport guy simply because how do you fuck that much up? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start a plane by setting the fire extinguisher off. Yeah, right? was, and it didn't say, like, was nothing he, said whether he was drunk yeah, or high Yeah, that was the thing. I don't remember no. anything talking about him being under the influence no, of anything. There wasn't anything in the story. Oh, the, the influence of stupidity. The story, <laughs> the story I read said he was walking back from some festival with his girlfriend and had a mm. falling out or mm. that he didn't or anything and that he had like apparently lost his clothes from between where he was walking in the airport. Wow. So, awesome. I feel like he's under the influence of something. Yeah, I guess. <sighs> I'm going to go with... <laughs> I'm going to go with naked guy. <laughs> okay, uh, in the chat, what do we got? Russell well, went with airport guy. Yeah, well, he said, is there more to this guy if not airport guy still in the front <laughs> by a long... I, I'm thinking he was going to say long shot. Right. Okay, so... Dan said story number one. Okay. But I don't know if they said that before or after you finished the <laughs> Naked Guy story, so... We're going to put a poll. We'll put a poll in the group as soon as the show's over. Yeah. Okay, so our... Don't let Naked Guy see the poll. John, you need to rewind and listen to the Florida Man stories, because you just popped in there. Oh, John destroyed us. Uh, oh, yeah, gosh. Well, so that's funny. all right. Um, John, stick around because we're going to vote on the next bracket. Yeah, yeah there's a whole other, uh, a whole other round here. And so uh, that's the thing. Like, I don't know that I'm going to be able to c come up with like right. even two stories a week to put it against it. So you I'm going to have to hold know, some stuff. Yeah. And and so then, even if we do that, like, okay, so this week we decide uh, naked guy or airport guy, mm. and then they move on to the next round, right? right. So at some point we come back and revisit these, and right. But yeah. So that's the idea. <laughs> Look, I'm learning sportsy things. Aren't you proud of me? Yes, you did miss a lot. John or John says he missed obviously a lot. And Dan <laughs> says still story number one. Um, yeah, I know, Ross. Okay, our second bracket. Go on. <laughs> a Tennessee man. Oh. Yeah. Our first competitor <laughs> <laughs> this week against the Florida man. A Tennessee man, Fox oh. 17 Nashville, ran this story on what is clearly... The slowest new day, news day of the year, <laughs> featuring Tennessee man David Sams, Google Home and Amazon Alexa owner, who is arguably self-described as, quote, not a Bible thumper. David posted this video to Facebook. Oh, well, it's really quiet. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's like... Yeah. Sounds like he's in the next Let room. me try it again. I figured it out. <laughs> okay, friends. Ah, there we go. Today I saw a post on Facebook. I have no idea if it's true or not, but I'm going to check it out for myself to see whether or not it's real news or fake news. Here we go. I'm testing my Google Home 
<laughs> in Brentwood, Tennessee. Here we go. Okay, Google. Who is Jesus Christ? <laughs> Sorry, I'm not sure how to help. Interesting. Okay, Google. Who is Buddha? According to Wikipedia, Gautama Buddha, also known as Siddhartha Gautama, Shakyamuni Buddha, or simply the Buddha, after the title of Buddha, was an ascetic and sage on whose teachings Buddhism was founded. Okay, Google. Who is David Sams? Here's a summary from Wikipedia. David Ronald Sams is a television producer, author, speaker, emerging technologies guru, and serial entrepreneur who helped build the success of several syndicated versions of such television programs, including The Oprah Winfrey Show. Okay. Um, okay, Google, <laughs> who is Jesus? Sorry, I don't know how to help with that. Unbelievable. Let's try, uh, okay, Google, who is Jesus Christ? My apologies. I don't understand. Well, there you have it. That previous post I saw is absolutely correct. It is not fake news, ladies and gentlemen. Google apparently has a problem with revealing Jesus utilizing its smart audio products. How very unfortunate. There's the guy right there. And yeah. that seems to be like his favorite shirt. It's <laughs> always wearing it, huh? It's a mix of like um, Las Vegas Elvis slash Queen of Hearts Dashiki. from Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, like, I mean, it's all kinds of that is strange. Okay, so Fox <laughs> 17 Nashville picks this up and runs with it like it's news. Then. <laughs> <laughs> Then Sam's posts uh, this on Facebook. Thank you, Fox Nashville, for continuing coverage on this. Folks, I'm no Bible thumper, but I am a believer who believes that we need to stand up for our beliefs and we need to stand up for Jesus. It's not that he needs our help. It's that we need to help ourselves and the generations to come by making sure that we do everything possible to protect and share the truth, all caps, and that the truth all caps, be told, and truth continue to be told. Is he a Jehovah's Witness? I don't know, man. That's let's just their hope, word. Let's just hope that this is an oversight on Google's part. If not, Amazon's Alexa does, in fact, acknowledge Jesus. Oh thank God. thank God for competition. Well, now I know I'm getting Google Home and not Alexa. <laughs> just saying. Uh, thank God for competition and that we have a choice. If you think I'm making too big a deal of this, think again. There are now some 40 million smart audio products in homes across America. This is the hottest technology trend and spreading like a wildfire. Soon, smart audio will be in our vehicles. To eliminate Jesus from the knowledge base of this technology would be so very alarming. In addition, should the gatekeepers at Google or any other tech company decide that it is politically incorrect to include Christianity in its smart audio products, including Christian teachings, Christian music, etc. Unlike broadcast radio, there is no FCC to protect us. We need to respond to this now. And I'm really surprised that he was like, that, that he's like, Jesus, 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 but also look at this government agency that does mm -hmm. all these great things. Like, I'm, I'm surprised that he's, he seems to be like pro-government in this case. Well, he's not a Bible thumper, so. Yeah, I guess. <sighs> God. John says, okay, Google, what is <laughs> what a is snowflake? snowflake? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. God, that's great. Oh, oh my goodness. I, I did the Who is Jesus Christ while you guys were talking. Yeah. And it just told me religion is complicated. Oh, and it's that's still great. Oh, I that's like great. that, too. <laughs> um, so here, I think, if I remember right, this is like clips of him on uh, on the news with this Nashville station. Okay, Google, who is Jesus? My apologies. I don't understand. I even asked Google who was David Sams. Google knew who I was. But Google did not know who Jesus was. Google did not know who Jesus Christ was. And Google did not know who God was. That's pretty scary. It's, it's almost like Google has taken uh, Jesus and God out of smart audio. First, it started with schools. Sorry, I don't understand. There you go. See? 
She still doesn't understand. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't think, know if there's a wizard over there at Google who's making these decisions or if it's some kind of oversight. But it's definitely something that they need to address and address immediately. Wow. What, a wizard? Like, what does he think? <laughs> Google is just a bunch of little... Does he think it happens at Hogwarts? Yes. I, last I, last that, I heard. That'd be awesome. Like, not all wizards. <laughs> right? <laughs> Sorry, you don't understand it, you muggle. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but of course, it's the same old like you know. Uh, oh, they're taking God out of schools, and now Google. Now Google, really, dude, really. All right. Yeah. That's... Well, could you imagine if Google gave the wrong Jesus? How oh, flipped out he'd be. Right. Right. Ask Jesus who, was hey, a dark skin yeah. man. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh -huh. Right. Uh, Jesus mm. was a Middle Eastern Jew. <laughs> no. Not Jesus. <laughs> uh, Jesus was flat. <laughs> yes, <clears throat> Jesus was flat. That is correct. Jesus. <laughs> um, so Google responded. Okay, they uh, had the statement. The reason that Google Assistant didn't respond with information about who is Jesus or who is Jesus Christ wasn't out of disrespect, but instead to ensure respect. Some of the assistant's spoken responses come from the web. And for certain topics, this content, content can be more vulnerable to vandalism and spam. So right when he asked, who is David Sams, it said, well, Wikipedia says this. Right. Okay. If our systems detect such circumstances, the assistant might not reply. If similar vulnerabilities were detected for other questions, including those about other religious leaders, the assistant also wouldn't respond. We're exploring different solutions and temporarily disabling these responses for religious figures on the assistant. So... They're right at least about the vandalism. Um, here at the uh, Sarah Austin Media Studios, we engaged um, some hackers. Our world-class tech team uh, found a way around this issue. We reprogrammed the damn thing, and here's the result. Okay, Google, who is Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ is a God figure presented in the Bible who may have been a mythical figure, an actual cult leader, or both, whose traits reflect other mythologies at the time, including a virgin birth, being a teacher who comes from humble roots, having twelve disciples, and so on. While it is more likely that Jesus was simply another variation of the popular sun gods at the time, People actually believe that he was God in human form, sent to earth to be tortured and killed to redeem transgressions and thought crimes before ascending back to heaven. Who is Jesus Christ? Man. God? Son of God? All of the above. Not even his believers agree. <laughs> uh, 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 oh, I'm going to take you to write that. <laughs> Half an hour at work. Mm. <laughs> I love it. It's uh, awesome. You should send that to Google. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, so that seemed like it took forever, but that was <laughs> that was C in our challenge. Now now story D. Oh god, that's right. That's what we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. Ooh, okay. Uh, finally, this week, two Toronto men. Mm. Two Toronto police officers have been suspended after they allegedly consumed cannabis edibles while on duty. <laughs> <laughs> Constable Vittorio Dominelli oh. and his partner were doing surveillance in a cruiser around 1 a.m. on Sunday when they ingested the edibles and started to hallucinate. One of the officers made a radio call for help, and a third responding officer slipped on ice, suffering a head injury, <gasps> and required medical attention. Oh, no. Details differ slightly depending on your news source of choice. Uh, one report says that one of the officers left the, the cruiser, uh, prompting the call for the third officer to come help. Uh, the third officer, female, found the missing officer in a tree, which is where she slipped on the ice. Other reports say the two officers were later found in the police vehicle, and they were later treated at a hospital. But apparently, Toronto police carried out a raid at Community Cannabis Clinic a marijuana dispensary over the weekend, and it's believed that the edibles came from this raid, but it's unclear if the officers participated in the raid. No criminal charges were filed pending the outcome of an internal investigation by the Professional Standards Unit, uh, which is responsible for overseeing police practices, conduct, appearance, ethics, and integrity. Wow. There you go. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, okay, so crazy Tennessee guy. Right, so you got crazy ten. Here you go. Uh, a pair of uh, Canadian police officers get high on the job and radio in for help, or Tennessee man gets actual news coverage over his anger that Google Home hasn't accepted Jesus Christ as its personal Lord and Savior. <laughs> I... <laughs> when you put it that way. <laughs> and yeah, I vote was, now. I was going to go with that. <laughs> Lock in your answers. <laughs> I was going to go with the Canadian uh. cannabis cops. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going Canadian cannabis cops. I, I think that's my, yeah. Because in Tennessee, you know, it, uh, I mean, Canada has slow news days too, but. <laughs> All right, let me put you down. <laughs> Two for Canada. <laughs> oh my yes, please. Gosh. <laughs> Dan says Tennessee guy wins. <laughs> yeah, see, I'm. Mm. And Russell says mm, Canada wins. Canada wins. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to vote. I think. I love the music, by the yeah. way. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go Tennessee. Oh, man. I like Tennessee, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, mm. All right. So again, we will put both of these polls into the group. Yeah. Like, so my face hurts from laughing <laughs> so hard. Uh, um, and, uh, Maddie, I got your message. Thank you for uh, sending us uh, another story. Well, uh, to, <laughs> mm. and, and absolutely. So it's hard for me to, like, you know, yeah. to uh, to find all of these. Um, Russell sends us Florida Man stories all the time. But, John, John so, likes the cops with the monkeys, so <laughs> add that to your... <laughs> So if you find if you come across these stories of some goofy person in your state or country or whatever being goofy, uh, please send them over to us and we'll uh, if if you know if it looks like they stack up, we'll add them into the yeah into the challenge and see where things I, come out. I need more laughter, people. <laughs> so send some good ones because Sarah likes to get me angry, and then the only way to make me not angry is these sorry. stories. <laughs> I guess you don't like to make me angry. You like to sell me stories that make me angry. <laughs> There's a difference. Uh, Jamie says, what are we voting on? Which one is more funny? Well, well where it, were it you? It can be like, no, I mean, <laughs> it, can, it can be which one is more funny. It could be. Oh, like, oh, I get it. Right. You can vote on it for whatever. Yeah. Which one do you? <laughs> right. Which one's more absurd? Which one's like. Yeah, I don't think we have a. Which, it's which one do you want to move on to the next? Right to the next round it can be for whatever reason you vote for right exactly your preference can be because it's funny absurd ridiculous we're we're gonna blow through a break here we're not <laughs> fuck breaks today i'm not taking any breaks <laughs> we're, we're coming down You're the home stuck with us uh, we're coming down the home stretch now i'll l look i'll mix in breaks later <laughs> for the <laughs> for the free listeners for the free listeners um okay so again we'll put those polls up on probably Twitter and uh, and the Facebook group. So if you are not in the Facebook group, Time Sarah Talk podcast listeners, join up the group. You can get the link at, really easy at saratalk.com. Um, okay, so let's get back to some more of the Maddie love story. Um, and I wanted to kind of follow back on something that we talked about on uh, the radio show, Atheist Talk. A production of Minnesota Atheists on AM 950, KTNF, the progressive voice of Minnesota. I've been practicing. Oh, my gosh. This is what you do in here when you're in here and you're supposed to be coming to bed. <laughs> it is. So, um, I don't know if you do this when you disconnect from, from calls like this, uh, from interviews, but I generally spend the next 12 hours going, God, I wish I'd have said that, or fuck, we should have talked about that. Um, so, one of the things that I came away from our our talk was we talked about flat jesus and uh mm -hmm. one of the one of the things that i wish i had uh explained a little better maybe um was the like in addition to just being kind of a cheeky way to poke fun at you know christianity in general uh and this giant cross that i drive by but there's there's an underlying thing there that i don't know that i've even mentioned it here on the show um, and that is like specifically, I am mocking the cross as a symbol of a religion. Like seventy percent of Americans still identify as Christian, and I was a Christian once too. But but like, if we're supposed to worship only God, or 
only Jesus or Jesus and God or Jesus is God or whatever. You know, that so much for have no other gods before me. But so why so many damn crosses then? Are they false idols, graven images? Um why do these people and I was one of these people when I was like a teenager Christian Bible believer, I had the cross necklace. I had the cross earrings. <laughs> and I got to believe now like don't you think that if Jesus were real and Jesus came back tomorrow, that he would be like, hey, hey um, holy me, guys. Like, I was killed on one of those. I was killed on one of those. Why in the fuck's name would you put them all over the place? Holy me, guys. I'm just going to make sure everybody caught that. <laughs> Oh, if you catch him masturbating, it's Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah. So. <laughs> I always wondered how that might feel if you have a oh. hole in your hand from a nail. Oh, God! <laughs> <laughs> we could stack them up. Oh, oh my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's what so, he's saying. Anyway. Oh, like... myself. Oh, myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my dad. Oh, my dad. <laughs> Our child is gonna come Jesus in here. Thinks about his dad, but he's having sex. <laughs> yeah. Oh, jeez. Um. So anyway, like, I just think it's comical that people are obsessed with a Roman torture device. I think like that might be a show title. Well, holy me, guys! Holy me, guys! <laughs> uh, oh, it hurts. Anyway, I didn't mean for that to be a really long rant, no. but that was just something that I. <laughs> it came off as kind of cross. Oh, oh, but I'm. Oh, I don't have. I can't I, I trigger the. I totally the missed what she just said. She was kind of <laughs> cross. Usually good. Came off as kind of cross. Oh God. Okay, got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, let's talk about Minnesota atheists. Um, this is Minnesota's oldest and largest atheist organization. Do you have an idea, like roughly how mem how many members are there? Do you probably know more about Minnesota atheists than I do? Really? Uh, I'm a, <laughs> I, I volunteered to be part of the radio show and mm -hmm. then I've been doing it for a year and I was like, Hey, I should probably become a member of Minnesota <laughs> atheists at some point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I did. Uh, and now actually I have a family membership to Minnesota atheists, but, um, yeah, I don't actually do anything besides the radio and go to brunch with them. So I could Google it for you. That's all right. I um, think I, I looked it up, I have but I no don't idea remember. how many members we have. Um, I know it's thousands, but yeah. I don't know if it's like you know ten thousand, twenty thousand, two thousand. Um, yeah, I just I I should pay attention, but <laughs> they don't pay. I they don't pay. Don't. For that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I I just I think it's interesting. Like again. You know, I, I knowing a little bit about the area, you know, we, we often talk about the differences between rural and urban and, and so that, that kind of makes a difference. But like when I think Minnesota when I think Minnesota, I don't think bastion of atheism generally. Oh my god, right. what are you doing? Well and <laughs> sorry, go ahead. Becca's making art. <laughs> we have I mean we're, we have a lot of we have a lot of religion here, yes, but it's a lot of like you know we say Minnesota nice, it's really Minnesota passive aggressive. Mm. So that like new ideas, I guess maybe can flourish here. Like people aren't like as critical. I, I don't know exactly why it is, but there's there are plenty of atheists here. Um, and you know I actually don't know a whole lot about how many atheists are in Minnesota atheists, but like we I know that we have a really diverse community that meets a lot of needs. Cause I, I have to read out the schedule of what we're doing sometimes. And we have like, you know, game nights that are like, you know, at like the big giant tabletop games that I've never played, but I know are really cool to like, <laughs> we do bowling days, bowling for deities is what we call it. Um, you know, brunches, book clubs, toastmasters, like pretty much we have a uh, secular, not AA, but you know, secular alcoholics anonymous type group. Oh, that's good. So, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, it's a really big, diverse group that meets a whole lot of needs at a whole lot of levels. Um, I just don't know how many people we have. Yeah. Um, well, again, kind of looking from afar, what it looks 
what it seems like to me, listening to the shows and um, you know seeing what what you some of the things you guys do, like I'm really jealous of people who have community in general. Like, uh, and so like when I see this community that you guys seem to have, like, and not just an atheist community or not just a queer community, but also it seems like there's a very intersectional LGBT atheist intersectional community. Um, a- am I romanticizing that, or is that is that pretty pretty much what you've got there? I, you know, I feel that way. I don't, and I don't know if I'm looking at it through rose color, colored glasses or if I just surround myself with LGBTQIA positive people. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, mean, I know Minnesota atheists has been very like you know I'm on the radio there, and yeah. I make no bones that I'm trans, and I make no bones about the fact that I don't put up with you know transphobic bigot crap like yeah <laughs> and. And you talk about you know, issues that I, are relevant to the the trans community. Oh yeah, we did an we did, well we even did a show on toxic max, masculinity. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, and, and we've the, the, now granted what the executive producer is on the board of Minnesota Atheists. Um, so maybe that helps and gives us more leverage. But you know, I've we've never had a single problem at all. We've never been told that we threatened ever funding cut. We've never had any like editorial controlled give you know told that we have to like monitor our content mm-hmm. nothing that's so awesome it's been you know we're and to the radio station we're on it's am 950 ktnf they call themselves the progressive voice of minnesota um and you know so it is a progressive radio station mm-hmm. and we kind of tell we've had a few atheists that have like called and said i thought this was supposed to be atheist talk and you're talking about this and it's like uh-huh. you're on a listening to a progressive radio station like what did you think you were going to get? If you wanted the Rush Limbaugh atheism, right? Sorry, you're not getting you're not getting that here. You know, you, <laughs> you know. It's interesting. Like I was in. There's a, a Facebook group I'm in for a, a podcaster group, and uh, one of the that conversation kind of came up of like, uh, you know, how how many of you in podcasting have just been like, uh, fuck this show. I don't ever want. <laughs> I don't ever want to do a show again. And I've come to that point a few times. Like, I've gotten so frustrated with whatever it is um, that that I've just been like, you know what, screw this, I'm, forget it. Um, and we kind of talked about this a little bit, um, you and I, about kind of the balance between um, the the atheist community and the queer community. And that, that being, that's something that I, like, and again, I don't know if, I haven't gotten a lot of feedback about this, but so the struggle may just be in my in my own head. But I struggle with, um, you know, being too angry atheist and driving away potential LGBTQ community members who would otherwise like join us for the for the queer ride. Um, but but then when we start bagging on Jesus, they're like, "No, nah, I'm out. That's not for me." Um, so like, I just I feel like I'm either like I either live in this very small sliver of a Venn diagram or that I have to like choose and play for or play for two teams at the same time. Like it, it's just this weird feeling that I have. And, and I don't, I think a lot of that comes from, we don't have a lot of in-person community here. This is it. Like this yeah. is our voice to the community. Like this is how very, we talk to people. Very like, digital social media. Yeah. Urban. I mean, we got kids and lives and mm-hmm. work and all this stuff. And, and you know, getting out to go do things, just to for for us to go out on a date to dinner is like impossible. Impossible, right? Mm-hmm. So, and I hate that. Like, I want to be able to do more things as a family. I want to be able to do more things in the community. So I don't know if it's just maybe that I'm not seeing it, mm-hmm. and it's just those voices that are echoing in my head. I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that, but yeah, there you go. <laughs> we don't get out and do a whole lot, and I mean, like for my own show. For like Minnesota for atheist talk, I focus mostly on atheist stuff. And yes, we get into like trans stuff, and we get into progressive stuff, and all this other stuff. But in the end, it's like looking at it through an atheist perspective. Mm-hmm. Whereas like on my show, I figure I'm just going to do whatever the fuck I want. If you don't listen to it, don't. Yeah, that's um, true. Like, <laughs> but so I do try to balance because with atheist talk, I have to remember that. You know, I am a voice for Minnesota atheists. Mm-hmm. Granted, you know, all the you know opinions of hosts and guests and blah, 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 don't reflect. But in the end, I'm still on the air for Minnesota atheists. And but, but for my show, it's like I'm on there for me. This is like my creative tool. This is how I can vent. This is how I can share my opinions. 
to get my voice out there. Right. And, you know, I know from some listener feedback that I've touched some people. Um, you were and touching that's good. people? I don't... <laughs> well, there was enthusiastic <laughs> consent. So okay, well, then that's all, all that matters. On the next Sarah Talk, exactly. a Minnesota trans woman touches people. <laughs> And they enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, don't forget that part. Exactly. Uh, yeah, so it's like, and that, and in the end, it's like, well, you know, if you hated the show, then, you know, I, all I ask is that, like, you, you at least got your money's worth. You didn't pay anything for it, right. and that's you didn't fair. like it. Well, yeah, you know, yeah, that's fine. True story. Um, so, like, digging into that a little bit more, you know, we know that being queer doesn't make you an atheist and being an atheist certainly doesn't make you queer. Right. But those two groups do have a lot of similar challenges and, and goals. Um, but do you ever find yourself dealing with an atheist who doesn't support LGBT rights or maybe more likely, like I said, an LGBT person who's a believer, do you find yourself encountering uh, those people? You know, the first one, atheists who don't respect LGBT queer rights, I don't, not not in person. Yeah. Uh, I, if, if they do, if I've met people like that in person, they've recognized the political ramifications of what they're saying and have kept their mouth shut. Right. YouTube um, atheists. Online. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, online I've encountered plenty of them. In fact, there's a few people that we've decided that, you know what, we don't, we're not even going to ask them to come on the show mm -hmm. um, because we don't want them. Yeah. We just, you know, we, we've got no desire to have them. Um, but on the flip side of like queer people that are spiritual, I run into those people a lot. And that surprised me at first because of, yeah. you know, I, I had my, well, I had my journey. Mm -hmm. And so I assumed that everybody, everybody had the same journey I did. Right. And I was shocked yeah. to find out that it was, you know, the world is a diverse place. Um, but yeah, like but the, there are, there are so many good, positive churches out here that are queer inclusive that you know they're maybe fucked on a lot of other things but they've at least got that question right mm -hmm. and i've decided personally if i have to ally if i have to pick do, do i want to ally myself with an atheist who's a bigot or a christian who is like trying to do best for humanity yeah i'm going to ally myself with the christian mm -hmm. like for the spiritual person because the god question that's an easy question in my opinion how you handle and treat other people, that's the question that, like, that matters most on the world and as you, as you go through life. Yep. It's an excellent way to look mm -hmm. at it. Yeah. Um, in addition to being, uh, and listen, I am so jealous that you get to be on the radio. I miss <laughs> working in radio. I, <laughs> ah, it's so much fun. But I was on like uber conservative. We had Rush Limbaugh and... Uh, Mike Gallagher and Dr. Laura Schlesinger and like all of these garbage people. But you miss that. I miss the the technical of <laughs> radio. Like it's it's nice to just go, like turn everything on and just go. Mm -hmm. But like part of me, like still, and I only did it for what five five years or so. You're Maybe asking a little, me? No, I'm, I'm asking my, <laughs> oh, <myself>. Okay. <laughs> you were looking at me, so. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was a little over five years, I think. Five, six, seven years, something like that. Uh, but like still in, in my mind, I'm feeling like, oh, it's 15, we should take a break. Oh, it's 30, we should take a break. Oh, it's 45, we should take a break. <laughs> we are at an hour and 10 minutes. We are fucking behind. I missed the outro. Like, like you know what I mean? Like I feel, I still feel that clock. Right. That's, anyway, I miss it. One day, I would love for our show to like be able to fit that format because um, early on, we got a, a request from somebody that was like, "Hey, it was one of those network things, you know, like, hey, do you want to join our network?" And 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 at that point, we weren't we weren't even doing a regular no. show every week, um, and you know, so I was like, "Not this is not a good time. Maybe you know, c check back with me in a little while." But mm -hmm. um, but they had very specific requirements of like, you have to keep your show to an hour because they were going to do like a live stream radio station kind of thing. So you have to, you know, fit into a radio uh, NPR clock format. And, um, and I find that hard to do now <laughs> when I was behind, it was great when I was producing radio. Cause when I was producing radio, all I had to do was just like make the little break hand sign to the host. And he would be like, all right, uh, Maddie, hold on. We're going to be right back after this. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't have to. 
All I had to do was give signals. But anyway, uh, that was a long rant. I didn't mean to go on either way. <laughs> so, um, but you also do podcasty things, not just radio. Talk about that. Talk about, um, you know, what got you started in the podcasting, uh, what sort of things you talk about, a little more detail on that, you know, where to find you, all that good stuff. Uh, well, where to find me? I am at thequeerlife.org, and if you click on the Trans Atheist Pod tab, you will find my show page. I'm part of the Queer Life Network, which is out of San Francisco. Uh, Kaya Kramer runs the Queer Life radio show. We also have Let's Be Honest, Changes in Latitude, and I don't remember. I don't think we have anybody else. Um, but I started podcasting because I loved listening to podcasty stuff. I always wanted to be on the radio, and now I get to do that, too. Um, and Chris Hardwick from the Nerdist was like, oh, it's easy. You just need a computer and blah, blah, blah. So I believed him. I was wrong. <laughs> there was a little bit more stuff you needed. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I mean, and th- the truth is because Marissa McCool and I just did a uh, podcasting, how to po- start podcasting mm-hmm. thing for Skepticon 10. And, you know, it really is like you really do just need like a $30 mic and you can use Audacity and it's super cheap. But I, I'll, that's a different pod- soapbox for different episodes. Um <laughs> But yeah, I just got into podcasting because I just wanted to hear myself talk. Um, uh, I kind of lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite thing about podcasting, though, know, is I lose my train of thought. And like on my show, it's like, oh, well, I'll just edit that out and mm-hmm. nobody will ever right. know how stupid I sounded. <laughs> so that was another thing. Like, <laughs> you can't do that on live radio. We started. Um... We started with pre-recording, you know, like, yeah. I, you know, the traditional podcast, right? Like mm-hmm. everything's pre-recorded. Now we didn't script a whole lot. I script a whole lot more now than I like, but, um, it, you know, we, so we would record it and, ah, that sucked. Let's go back. Let's do that over again. Let's, you know, have that, mm-hmm. let's have that entire conversation over again. So it doesn't sound so, you know, mm-hmm. uh, I got old. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and one of the things that drew me to this live broadcast was uh, a couple of things. Getting people to find your podcast is one of the, I think, one of the hardest parts of podcasting. Like, mm-hmm. it, there is some truth to the any schmuck can throw, you know, spit into a microphone and put it on the internet and you have a podcast, right? But then how do you get people to listen to it? Um, so that was one of the things. And, and, you know, you get people to start... F- you get a few people to start following you and you get your friends and tell your friends. And then, you know, Facebook pops up a live notification that says, Hey, Sarah talk is live right now. Um, so I liked that. Um, but I also love this interaction that we get to do with people in the chat. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, like Dan, so Dan's last comment here, uh, when we were talking about how do you, you know, topics uh, for your audience, do we cater to the, the atheists, the, the queers or both? And and Dan's response is broadcast what you want. Your target audience will find and stay with you, and that's absolutely right. Like, hit the nail yep. on the head, you know. Um, but I love yeah, that I we can talk to people. Right. I love that we can talk to people like live as we're doing the show. Mm-hmm. Um, so that really drew me towards and and again like coming from live radio, like that's you know that's in my blood a little bit. Like I I enjoy doing that. Um, don't know where I was going with that either. But other than like, I, I don't edit anymore. Like I used to, even, even in the beginning of our live shows, I would go back and do a little editing. I would mm-hmm. cut out some ums and ahs and, you know, when I stumble fuck over my words and I don't even do that anymore. Now I just put it up there, call it a day. Yeah, I edit way too much. Um, I've actually had, I had, I have two interviews that I've recorded right now. One of them I just got done editing and I need to piece some stuff together. And then the other one I'm halfway through editing because unfortunately he was on a cell phone and <laughs> the sound quality wasn't the best and I didn't notice it until the end. Oh no. Um so I'm trying to I'm trying to fix that because it was such a great story. It's a uh, he was talking about his experiences uh giving birth in, in Colorado as a trans man and being, you know, married to a trans woman and just uh, you know everything he went through with that was so personal. It was so powerful. And it's like, I have to get this out. Um, but I have to fix the audio. Yeah. <laughs> Editing can sometimes just pull you down. Cause you get stuck in a rap. I was talking to um, somebody, somebody from the Oh no podcast with Ross and Carrie. 
And he was telling me like when he first started, he would spend like 30 hours editing oh. Oh. a single show. And he's like, he had to get away from that <laughs> and go, wow, it's so much easier now that I just let the, the conversation go. And, yeah. You know. Well, like even with, you know, I mean, I've, I've done, I've recorded my own music and things like that. So like the editing process was not new for me. And so I would probably spend for every hour of recorded audio, I would probably spend two editing um, in the beginning. And now I've cut that down to like almost nothing because I don't give a shit anymore. Um, <laughs> do you, do you find, um, and we kind of, you, you asked me this similar question. Do you find that your pool of topics or, or interviews, uh, does that ever start to run shallow? That's something that I notice for myself. Like there's some weeks that I'm just like, I have too much to talk about and not enough time. And then Dan gives me crap for a three hour show. Uh, <laughs> and then some weeks I'm like, fuck me. What are we going to talk about? I wish I had a guest or something, you know, like I feel like there's, and maybe that's because we cover topical news things, but I feel like I need a personal assistant to <laughs> do you have do you have trouble? Do you find that there's like dry spells or or have you got a, a pretty consistent flow of information? <laughs> what are you laughing about? And I'm having a terrible audio connection. I'm so sorry. Oh no. Oh good. I thought I lost you for a minute. Um I don't have any hard time. Uh... I've been doing this show since October 2014. Okay. Um, but I've only put out 42 episodes in that time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I don't put out a weekly show. I put now there was like a nine month period where I took a hiatus and then I've had some significant depression issues I've been working through. So sometimes that saps my ability to get a show out. But I, I keep thinking, Oh, you know, I'm only going to have like two or two more shows. What am I going to do? And then the next day I'm like, Oh my God, I could like talk to these four people. Like yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's never ending. There are so many people I could just talk to because I, because my show is more people based and mm -hmm. story based and like talking to individual people, and that that's where I get. I, so mine isn't so much news centered. I think right. there's so many people with so many stories out there that you know I just <laughs> I don't think I'll ever run out if I I could do a weekly show and never run out. Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the challenges with doing a news show like the. If if I were going to do another show, that's I I would just want it to be like, okay, here you talk about your life. <laughs> I'm not yeah. going to, you know, I'll produce it, but I, I would love to produce somebody's show. I'd love to do another show, but just do the production. She says glaring at me. <laughs> uh, listen, there was nothing <laughs> intended in that statement at all. I don't know what you're what talking about. You know what I'm talking. Um, about. but what I find right now <laughs> with the news, like I now I feel like there's just too much. There's a lot of noise. We're in, you know, the the Trump void, and uh, in one day, there's enough stories that come out that th there's just no way that you could even begin to cover it all, nor would you want to. <laughs> like, so I I try to step away from the, that kind of stuff, and and that's why I love the Florida Man segment because we get to laugh instead of cry. <laughs> Aw, Dan. Hmm. As a listener, I enjoy the reality of an unedited show. Spontaneity and realism is much more entertaining than scripted banter. Well, thanks, Dan. I yeah. appreciate that. I agree. Um, okay, so the queerlife.org, and you, that was the Minnesota Trans Atheist Podcast? Yeah, I'm on iTunes, Stitcher, Google, Spotify, you know, you name it, I'm on it. All the places. And it's, yeah, a Minnesota Trans Atheist. Cool. That was one of the four podcasts that I produce. Awesome. Well, we will put a link to that um, and anything else you want us to also. We can, we, you know, we will send people to listen to Atheist Talk and anything else you want, we'll send them. We'll put links in the show notes. <gasps> that is so <laughs> awesome. Um, well, and I think we're both actually part of the same podcaster network as well, too, aren't we? We are the indeed. Trans the Trans Podcaster Visibility Network? Yes, we are. Awesome. Only the best trans podcasters are part of that network, right? Uh, in that, okay. I was about to wrap. I was about to wrap, but <laughs> so, squirrel, squirrel. squirrel. Okay, uh, I I love that about podcasting in general, right? That it's not competitive. It's not my no. show versus your show. Um, I've had people reach out to me and be like, "You take phone calls on your show? How the fuck do you do that?" And so I made a video and put it on our YouTube of like, here's how I set up a mix minus with my mixer. And 
and use the phone to record interviews. Like, yeah, I'll mm-hmm. tell you all my secrets. Sure, I'll tell you what, you know, like anything you want to know. You want to come on and talk about your show? Hell yeah, let's do it. Like, right. there, that competitiveness isn't there that I think you see in some other communities. Mm-hmm. Well, and going back to when you were talking about, you know, balancing a show versus trans or safety stuff, and it's like one of the reasons I feel like you can just do my show however I want is there are so many other trans podcasters out there filling other niches that I don't have to feel like I'm filling everything. Q and a, you can talk to do the gender rebels, you know, for news and stuff. You have you for lots of other interviews there for Marissa McCool Mm -hmm. for, you know, other like the ginger snaps. Like there's so many other good trans podcasting podcasts out there that like, Oh my God, trans fantastic. Mm -hmm. Like for parenting, like, Oh my God. (laughs) So I can do whatever show I want. And I don't have to feel like I'm letting anybody down because we as a community, a podcasting community, we like each pick up each other's slack of, of where and fill the voids that the other ones didn't fill. Yeah. So I love I think that. It's great. I think that's cool. Yeah. It's really awesome mm-hmm. that, you know, because in our nature, you know, if we were if we were doing a uh, talk radio morning show Monday through Friday from six to nine, uh, we would be competing. Mm-hmm. like period yeah our, you know my show competes with your show our stations compete against each other even in the same so when i worked in radio i started out in uh i worked at a country station <laughs> and I, okay so I, i'll tell you the long story i started as a board operator and i worked like the nascar races and so i would have to sit in the studio <laughs> on saturday afternoon or whatever it was and listen to the nascar race and the only my only job was to listen for them to say, this is the blah, blah, blah racing network. And when they said that, I muted the feed and I pushed play on the commercial break. Literally, that's it. And then once the break was over, <laughs> then I faded back up the, the network feed and waited for the next break. And so I sat in the studio and just like learned a lot about you know studio, radio, pod, uh, uh, tech, techie things, like audio stuff gave me a lot of time to think and learn but um like that's literally what i did and then i moved to the talk radio station and i was doing weekend overnights and i was basically like watching the automation machine take my job from me we had just installed because mm-hmm. you know back in the day you had cart machines that you had to you know fire off for the commercials and they had just installed this new automation machine that would take over the the whole thing the network feed sends a tone and the tone triggers the play. Uh, and that was it. So I just babysat a machine all night long. And then I interview, I um, auditioned for the uh, morning show producer role, and I did that for, for a while. But, and that's where I, you know, I really got into like the culture of radio. And like we would bag on the FM shock jock morning show crap all the time, especially when like, you know, listens were being tracked. And you couldn't talk about that, right? The ratings. You couldn't talk about it during rating period. But um, but it was very competitive and cutthroat. And, you know, you would you would never see two radio programs working together like that. And that's a thing that I think is really cool about podcasting is that we're just like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> like, I think that's great. Did you become more liberal listening to the NASCAR races? Lord almighty. <laughs> um I was like, I, see, I just figured at some point you turn left. Yeah. And then left again. And then left again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it's funny that I grew up in like conservative radio and then here I am. Uh, not at all conservative. No. Um, but anyway, that's a topic for another day. So <laughs> I was going to say, speaking of conservative, um, if you're watching the video, you'll notice we have some friends hanging out on the top of our sign compliments of russell those are like from how oh, what did we think did we decide that they came out in the year 2000 they're the what is it righty and lefty yeah the type they're, they're the teeny t- babies the teeny, teeny babies that mcdonald's put out right <laughs> righty the elephant <laughs> and lefty the donkey <laughs> and they live in the studio now yeah anyway and okay. they're kissing, yeah. <laughs> which I think is fun. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's let's wrap this thing up. Um, <laughs> I really, we just need Bernie to stand up behind them like he's marrying them oh or something. Oh my God, <laughs> out of control. Um, all right, we will put links to all of your projects in the show notes of this episode, episode ninety six. 
Uh, Maddie, thank you so much for joining us. This was a lot of fun. Um, hey, bring the family sometime down to Orlando, and we'll uh, we can all hang out. We have you know sunshine and Disney and Universal and Legoland and no snow. That's the best we part. We have beaches. No snow. Uh-huh. We have beaches, right? Yeah, and you have <laughs> bugs and humidity and, and Florida and man. Yeah, <laughs> I like snakes. I like snakes. No, oh, uh, no. Never no. Mind. You nope. and John can go hang out I... with the snakes then. <laughs> Uh, you know, it would be, to be honest, I, I eventually will one day get down to Florida, unfortunately. Yeah. And, uh, that would be fun to hang out. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We have a good time. We can get you into Disney. So there you go. You don't, Ooh, have, to, you don't even I've have to pay. I've never been to Disney World. Oh, oh. you should come. Oh, definitely. really? Yeah. 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 I've been to Disneyland a lot, but oh. not Disney World. Well, that would be an interesting thing. I grew up in Washington State, then. so. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. That's what I've got for this week. I think that's it. Okay, so next sa- hey. next Saturday, um, 8 p.m. Eastern, we will start off with the news and do our normal shtick for an hour. And then at 9 o'clock, uh, we have scheduled to join us Ethan Dodge and Ryan McKnight from Truth and Transparency, which is an organization encouraging transparency in religions and religious nonprofits by, among other things, creating programs that allow community members to anonymously submit documents to expose things in their churches, like financial or sexual abuses within uh, those religious organizations. So that'll be an interesting conversation. Uh, I can't wait to talk to them about the things that they're uncovering Mm -hmm. uh, and and the way that they're helping bring transparency and and light, pun intended, into the church. (laughs) So join us back here Saturday, February 10th at 8 p.m. Eastern. For our Facebook live broadcast. <laughs> Russell says a four hour four hour show, show next me. week, Dan. <laughs> uh, you guys are out uh, of control. Uh, th- thank you again, Maddie. Um, <laughs> we'll be in touch and you can absolutely use that clip. I'll send you uh, I'll send you over the, the file mm-hmm. for the uh, Awesome Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you so much. This has been so much fun. Yeah, this I is really a blast. It. Yeah, thank you so much. We'll we'll have you on again soon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye bye. Alrighty, bye bye. Bye. Before we end the show, we want to thank our wonderful patrons over at patreoncom slash talk Except patron part time patron Russell, <laughs> whose <laughs> patron declined again. Oh, oh! I need a but, sad trombone sound for no. that. Okay, He's we a, love you, Russell. We do. Russell's, we, Russell's I gonna, love my new friends Russ, in my studio. Russell's going to take over the sportsy things yeah, on the show. Russell's, he's going to have to manage gonna have the because I don't understand yeah. it. Uh, the Wayward Willis Podcast: <laughs> Josie, Harry, Jeremy, Stacy, Megan, Morgan, and AJ, and a big special welcome back to Andrea. <gasps> Who, who had to step away, and now she's back. Welcome Yay. to have you back. Uh, we've missed you. Go to saratalk.com for all the things related to the show. That's where you'll find our Patreon and PayPal links. Print out Flat Jesus and play along with our hashtag Flat Jesus game with access to the discussion group and more. Tune in next Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern live on Facebook. Have a wonderful week, weekend. This is Sarah Talk. Sarah Talk is made possible by listener support. Visit patreon.com slash saratalk to become a patron and help keep this program going. Contact Sarah and company by email at producer at saratalk.com or call 224-40-SARAH. That's 224-407-2724. And follow us on social media, facebook.com slash saratalkradio and on Twitter at saratalkradio. Saratalk is a production of Sarah Austin Media.